How's it going, folks? Welcome to Learning CDH, the podcast dedicated to teaching you everything you need to know about Competitive Commander. I'm your host, Matthew, and I'm joined once again, as always, by my co-host, Eric. And today we're going over the Top Deck Gaming Expo event that took place this past weekend in Stone Mountain, Georgia at CCS. This was a really big CDH tournament ran by Eminence. This was an 8K CDH event. Uh, on top of a, a bunch of other side events that, that happened. Um, but the main event, the CDH 8K, with 200 entrants, it was a total blast. Like, we we're going to go ahead and spoil it. It was a ton of fun. It was a really cool event. This was our second Eminence event we got to attend after the cookout. And um, I think they just won up to the cookout. Like, to, to me, just kind of, well, you know, we're going to go into the details. Um, but in terms of like the venue, the quality of competition was crazy high, arguably like some of the highest. There were so many killers at that event and some of them just couldn't make it because it's just, you know, crazy, crazy uh, competitive. And yeah, we're going to break down not the top 16. That'll be on my previous video. I have a breakdown video on that. You can go check out. Um, but this is a breakdown more of our experience, kind of like on the ground level, um, going through the event, the venue. Uh, how it was ran, those sort of things. Looking to run a great CDH event? Having hosted over 100 successful tournaments, Eminence Gaming has your back with Command Tower. With its intuitive tournament manager dashboard, you can handle everything from deck list submission to player management in just a few clicks. Then all players need to do is scan a generated QR code to have access to your full tournament bracket. Put your players first with seamless pairing software and real-time access to standings. Take the guesswork out of tournaments. Give Command Tower a try for your next event. What'd you, what'd you think, Eric? Um, A plus. A plus. Yeah, if this was the uh, Pizza One Bite app, and if everybody knows who Dave Portnoy is, uh, I would definitely give that a high nine because nine is like basically perfect on that app for for, for pizza. Because there's no there's no such thing as a ten. Because once you give a ten, you you can't go any higher. Mm. So it was definitely like a 9.1. It was joking aside. It was really excellent um, just from top to bottom. And I uh, hopped on the uh, stream with Zane and basically kind of gave my feedback on there. And it was a really good time. Just, you know, magic aside, tournament aside, the venue was phenomenal. Really, really liked CCS, which is Charlie's collectible show. Correct? Yes. I should. I followed them on Twitter. They actually gave me a free. They gave us some free. Oh, yeah. They gave us free swag for just shouting them out and stuff and, and whatnot, which was awesome because I got like a one of those big like 12 pocket binders that's like textured and like like the exo binders that zip up. I mean, that's that's phenomenal. Those aren't cheap. Overall, really impressed with that. I uh, really like the convenience store that's built into the mm. uh, the place because the banner, I don't know if you saw it, but it had like Chibi Goku and Chibi Vegeta on it and mm. other like Chibi anime characters and stuff. And if you don't know actually what this place is, it's not like a true. It's not like an LGS. Mm. It's like a vendor setup. Uh, some people might know it as the painting tree where they have like multiple vendors and they sell like knickknacks and paintings and stuff like that. Except for this time, it's all sweet stuff. Pops, magic, figures, statues, uh, T-shirts, basically everything under the sun for your nerdy heart. It's there. Yeah. And uh, it was great. The idea is it being like, I think it's like a weekly convention sort of like it's a different thing every week or and it's like set up to support very large events. So we had just in the back a 200 player CDH tournament while at the front there were like fighting game tournaments going on uh, and there's in between all of that a whole bunch of vendors uh, you can buy cards from again you could buy like anime stuff just like random old sort of like gaming adjacent collectible type things there was tons of space you're kind of looking at the front you're like are we all going to fit in there and then you're just like oh yeah you could hold a like a thousand player magic event here if you wanted to yes oh easily and then they also had the uh other side for like the other side events that was several tables that way as well so plenty plenty of space there no issues at all let's talk about just getting there what time what time did you get there on friday we got in kind of later than i wanted i was shooting for like four. our check-in was like at four uh, I was shooting for like a, a round then or a little bit earlier. Uh, we got there like five ish. Went to dinner with Eliana, Phil from Thraben U and Hermit Druid. We went to dinner. That was nice. Got to hang out with them. Just talk magic. Decks they were playing, what they expected. 
I did that that night and then went back to the hotel. The Hilton that most of the players were staying at was just completely taking, taken over by CDH players. There was just the entire front lobby was just people getting together and playing on any surface that they could. Just CDH pods firing nonstop. Really awesome lobby con experience. Just a great, like, super chill vibe of just people jamming. And, like, some people are there, you know, like, really trying to get, like, competitive practice in. Some people are just swapping decks and playing and hanging out and drinking and doing whatever. So, first night, very cool. I stayed out too late. Uh, I did I did more than I should have. I was very chill going into this event, and that was, like, from the beginning. Never got enough sleep, never drank enough water, despite all my best efforts. But we were just there hanging out. Yeah, so so day one, I guess day zero, whatever, the Friday before the event, got to hang out with a bunch of cool people, meet up with people. This is my first time meeting, like, uh, Mikey from Eminence for the first time. Their first time going to an event as sponsored players, which is cool. We, we, we'll talk about, like, it's, like, the only experience we have is, like, minor magic celebrities, kind of, when you go to these events. Because, like, we have such a high density of, like, our target audience that attends these events and then so like nobody normally will recognize me when i'm walking around but then when you go to like something like this it's just like oh hey lamora which the meme of <laughs> <laughs> there's the meme of no one knows my name i say at the beginning of every episode you you watching this now what's my name what's my first name <laughs> it's right here it's above lamora. my head it's right here above my head and your last name is cards and it's always Lamora and Eric. People remember Eric, but it's Lamora and Eric, um, which is fine. You can totally feel free to call me Lamora. It doesn't matter. But if you want, you could call me Matthew. That's also technically my name. But yeah, Lamora and Eric showed up. Uh, lots of cool shout out. Got to see people just walking around, people I didn't know wearing my merch. That was uh, that was like winning the event right there. Very cool. Yeah, that, that was pretty that was pretty interesting. So I didn't get to do all the fun stuff like you did the first night. We got there. We so it was one of my best friends. It's it's his like bachelor party kind of weekend or whatever. And we're not getting wild. We're playing magic, right? So we just kind of had it all wrapped up into one. We had a group that went down there. So we got an Airbnb that was about 10 to 13-ish minutes from the venue. So really not far at all. Because it took like five to six minutes just to get out of the neighborhood. Uh house was sweet we stayed at it was really nice it was five bedrooms and it was two floors so you had three bedrooms up top two bathrooms bathroom downstairs uh two extra bedrooms your living room was pretty massive you had a huge beautiful like oak counter that had like really nice bar stools and perfect lighting so it would have been amazing to play cdh like there it would have been actually a great place to play magic i didn't expect to find a place like that kind of in that area, but it was really affordable because that was the difference between us staying at a hotel and staying there because there was originally four of us that was supposed to be together. Only three of us got to go, unfortunately. So the hotel was like, it's really kind of hard to jam force, you know, four dudes in a hotel. It's just Especially like comfort, one room. Yeah. yeah, this isn't the old days when I was like grinding, playing Grand Prix, and we were just like trying to save as much money as we can so we could go to an all you can eat buffet after the tournament. Um, we're a little bit more high class now. Thank you very much. You know, we've we're, we've we've matured and upgraded to adults. At least uh, <laughs> that's what I tell my wife. Uh, we got there. We stopped at some shops along the way okay. uh, because there's some there's some pretty sweet magic shops on the way down to uh, that area from Middle Tennessee. Uh, stopped at Energy Flux. They are a smaller store, but they have an amazing singles collection like mm. it, it it blows my mind it's like you don't think like it's kind of like by chattanooga but they got like two cases you're like yeah how many good cards can be in two cases they had them all so it was great mm. plus they had binders and other inventory that you you know you needed tons of sleeves tons of sealed products so pretty cool place there then we stopped at a store that was in that local area where we were playing stone mountain uh, john actually ran into somebody that he knew john was one of my friends who went with us he knew he knew somebody in the store. Christian and I have been on vacations, you know, a few times together. And we always buy collector boosters of whatever set is available during that time. And it's typically like a modern set. So we always joke and we're like, oh, we'll, we'll like, you know, buy like two or three collector boosters. And we'll pull like straight gas. Or rather, my wife will pull straight gas. And then I don't buy any more. Mm -hmm. And then the collector boosters go out of print. And then they're like four or $500 a box. We, we made a pact. We're like, all right. If we see a collector booster box of Modern Horizons 2, which if you look at that, it's like the five elementals, Ursa Saga, Ragavan, Esper Sentinel. It's just like pure gas, right? Dothy Voidwalker, uh, DRC, you know, just really good cards overall that translate from modern and, and CDH. We found a box 
and it was like really underpriced. So he got it and he opened like his box was insane. So we're like pack Warren at night, just opening like at my first pack was like a foil uh, Yavamaya plus a foil like prismatic Vista etch foil so it was like 50 50 plus dollar pack right there and then i'm like oh this pack's gonna be really hard to beat then john like next levels me with like a foil fetch and a foil full art doffy woodwalker and then christian like hits two foil fetches and a fury like and like an alt art fury and it was just like you know it was so much fun and it was silly boys spending money you know Mm -hmm. that they, they probably shouldn't but I was really happy for Christian getting some awesome stuff out of his box. And that was that made it worth it. And then we ate some pizza at this. Not going to lie, pizza didn't look great in the town. And I'm a big pizza guy. I like to, you know, I like a good like coal fire pizza style action, but kind of traditional. It was okay. It was like, you know, like six, four, you know, like football pizza. Not that great. I'm an old man. So I got in bed like as soon as we got back, I was exhausted. And then I just got up early and got ready for the tournament. So Friday night, we hit like a German place up that I also the judges had a judge beating our judge dinner there and and they had hit up too. wouldn't wouldn't have been my choice. I don't have uh, a big history of eating German food, but uh, it seemed like sauerkraut fine to me. I liked the giant pretzel and I like the the strudel. That was definitely good. But uh, yeah, so that was about it for day one. Yeah, I ended up staying up till probably like I stayed out till probably like 12. I stayed up to probably like two. Um, Not ideal. I was sitting there. My friend was throwing his deck list together who had not played since cookout. I hadn't even touched the deck since cookout. And I'm making sure like I'm basically undoing the changes I've made because you have to have like actual proxies. And so we're like making sure I'm going through all the paper sl- slips that are in front of cards and making sure it matches what you have online. And I didn't even know I needed to do that until like, you know, uh, I got some yinglings at the at the hotel and I take my melatonin when I got home and I'm sitting there like just unable to know what's happening. <laughs> Look, trying to get these decks together, shorting them by like card type and stuff. Uh, I guess we got it. I don't think, you know, I, I guess we got it right. At least mine was right. I made sure mine was right before and I was still stressing about it. I would say I stress so much. I stress more about logistics of like making sure my deck and the other deck was right making sure I got the cards that other people needed more than I trust about the actual tournament. I don't know why it just, I don't know. It just got to me even, even in the tournament, even after I double checked my deck, I was like, God, what if I get deck checked? What if something's wrong in my deck? There wasn't anything wrong in it. It was right. Going in with a bit of anxiety, I guess. Okay. So that covers day one, day zero, whatever. Uh, Day one of the actual event, Saturday, I got there late, (laughs) not my fault. But we got there, got there on time for the event later than I wanted. I'll specify. Yeah. And then we played. So the, the events are structured. They're pretty much always structured this way now for the imminence, like in person, large events. Five rounds of Swiss day one. And then day two is two rounds of Swiss top 16 uh, semi or, and then going into the finals. Pretty standard now. Uh, this seems to be a pretty good set up. You don't end up there too long. I think we finished around six o'clock ish day one maybe a little bit earlier maybe a yeah. little bit earlier i think it's like maybe like 5 30 ish yeah some somewhere around there um there's no lunch break that was probably the, the thing that didn't bother me actually because i just i never i ate half a sausage biscuit and then was just like that powered me through the event i guess i don't i i didn't prep well for this. i didn't go oh. in i went i went in with not very much sleep and half a sausage biscuit and a couple a couple swigs of mcdonald's coke and that, that that's what got me through um running off the yinglings and melatonin yeah Yeah. so um yeah when we get to our performance that maybe it'll all be clear that uh what happened for me but yeah so day one um structure pretty good some people might like a lunch break we probably would have ended had we had one around seven i guess or something like that um giving people time to go eat and stuff there being a concession stand built into the place and like there were restaurants right next to it there's like a place you could go grab burgers I never went in any of them. Can't tell you how good they were, but they were there. So if you had a, a round that ended quickly, you probably were fine anyways to go eat at some point. My experience in the event, uh, day one, there were no major setbacks in terms of like, I think r- things ran pretty quickly. The rounds were, so the the, the command tower software, they've pretty much figured out how to get this very, going very quickly. When the, when the round ends, they very quickly have your pairings. You can look on your phone or on the TV screen. Having the pairings on the screen was nice uh, to... So it's like if you didn't have your phone or whatever, just an, another way to just look at them. And there were there were pairings on all the screens. And then yeah, you with the QR code too, yeah, and the QR code and time for the rounds. And then yeah, so we're 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 in the events we're playing. Then we both only play right. Yeah, you didn't play day two, right? You just played day one. Yeah, I didn't. Play day we two. both only played day one. Didn't have amazing performances. What? Did, how did you feel about day one? 
This is interesting because for those who don't know, like I'm a fitness guy. I don't know what to say, but like I work in the space of health and wellness. Like I'm a personal trainer, sports nutritionist. I work out and lift like five to six days a week. And uh, I'm all about like preparation, hydration. Um, You know, I always have like like a kit on me that's got like whatever you need for the situation. I can MacGyver anything. I can MacGyver a broken foot to like a migraine. And I had a migraine Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to this is, <laughs> this, I know this has nothing to do with magic, but it very much affects your gameplay. Uh, if you got anything like nagging that's bothering like a headache, a toothache, a uh, runny nose, whatever it could be, it's going to take away from your ability to focus on the game. That's why like you need to be prepared for these types of things. And, you know, magic's a hard game. There's a lot of decisions to be made cdh is especially like people talk about how hard like legacy and modern and all these other formats are and I, I i've played all those formats i do not think that those formats are anywhere close to the decision trees that you have in commander the logistical nightmare that is a C, like the cdh meta we talked about this like last episode and and a lot of just like when you cast the spell the number of triggers and things that go on the stack things that are interacting with your spell the capability of your opponents to interact, like the known and unknown, unknown information is all tripled in, in a game of CDH. So like, there's a lot going on. So there's a lot going on. So anything that's going to take away from that, you know, it's, you know, obviously the onus is on you as a player to be responsible for it. This is the first tournament and I don't know why I, it, it's like I wasn't locked in. I didn't love my deck choice going into it. I felt really down on it, even though like the deck effectively had like a two oh three performance, like, you know, two wins, no losses, and a draw and three draws. Like performance basically the week before. That's pretty good record for not a not a tier one, tier two, or tier three deck, whatever you want to call it. I played Corval for obviously who those didn't know. And then the list that I took, I felt was way better. Like it was faster, it was cleaner, it was on more reanimation spells, it was on a really high density of tutors, it was on Bergy, it was on double wheel, like it was like it felt great. Like in playtesting, it was awesome. I literally saw zero reanimation spells the entire tournament in five rounds there are certain cards that i have actually have never cast or put into play in tournament magic and and it's been like four straight events it's it's weird i don't understand sometimes like but i'll tell you what the deck does not have a trouble drawing naturally that's like dual casters <laughs> uh assassin's trophies abrupt decays all these like fumbly cards mayhem devil, and, I think you mentioned yeah mayhem, oh gosh <laughs> to be fair mayhem devil would have kept me in a game and i i actually owe, owe the mayhem devil boy uh, an apology that was on me but round one was really interesting for me i was playing against a uh, blue farm I, so i think we tracked my like average seed order before this event and it was like 3.8 is my average seed order like 3.5 it was 3.5 i'm sorry like 3.5 average seed order so round one i'm at table one i'm like feeling good i see i'm in fourth seat and it's blue farm rock side tivet than me mm-hmm. And then lo- love the person to death. But one of my opponents is like, oh, he's on Treasure Storm and da 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 and going off. And like, he's the problem. But Rogsai snap kept to seven. So oh, they no. got like, mm. they were they were the target. Blue Farm kept like a five. And I kept uh, like a second seven or something like that. That was like a, just a good hand. The game came down to effectively like Blue Farm was like attacking the Rogsai player. Rogsai attempted to go for like um, an ad nauseum. It got stopped. After like some back and forth stuff, it came back to me. Tivit's not really doing anything. So I fire off an ad nauseum. And my ad nos was total. It was a sad nos. It was a garbage nos. It was like four drop, four drop, three drop, three drop. No fast mana, no rituals, no rocks, nothing like that. Mm. No, didn't even hit a reanimation spell for my dock side, which is like unbelievable because I like nods from like 34 life. It literally got to come all the way back around to me. So I got to attempt to piece it together again. So I tried to go for it. I had like two or three pieces of protection. They both had demonic consultation, which cracks me up because I'm like the ad nauseum resolved and nobody stopped the ad nauseum. Like, I don't know how many people don't respect playing against like Jund or just in general, like a Mardu deck or anything like that. But like typically when ad nauseum for 34, like life, it's really hard to interact with that. Like, cause yeah. they're going to have the resources, especially like the way Corvald works. Like one mana from a reanimation spell is literally like the equivalent of like, you know, six additional mana and like six cards because of Corvald. So yeah. I don't want to have to fight through that, especially after everybody be 
being ultra low in resources, but double demonic consultation. And then they both milled like all their win conditions. Their decks were pretty small after that. So, and Blue Farm just uh, did nothing most of the game and won as as blue farm does <laughs> it mm. it's the good guy plays plays the police and then uh rolls card advantage and just gets there but all my opponents were actually fantastic so but that's kind of it's you know you could be like bad beats variants whatever that just wasn't my game to win you know again seed order really matters and that and in that and it's pretty tough playing a deck and it's made me realize like you know playing a couple of tournaments and stuff and just tournament magic feels so much different than regular magic like playing with people even if in a if you practice a tournament like mm. for a tournament just feels so much different so my round one i was also going fourth i, I brought rock side it was um rock side till you die yes wearing that shirt i know it was edric went third right in front of me and then i think there was like a mardu list typical i think there was a blue farm there um and then one other like try, can't struggle to remember the list that was on the play i think it was something with like a proactive like kind of slant i kept a like a hand that was like a turn one fish threw me some cards but it was a little awkward it, it didn't feel like a hand i should i should throw away it was like a turn one fish and a bunch of mana but with no other kind of payoff and then i just didn't i was ready to go off uh like my turn three ish but i just didn't get one um the edric before me they were really going off with fairy mastermind it drew them all edric drew them a lot of cards and the fairy mastermind because there was my fish and i think after me another fish came down it's either fish or heuristic i think it was another fish ended up drawing a good bit of cards off of those uh and then it just had like an extra turn spell i think i messed up by i i cast a burgy on my turn two i think it was to hold up a blocker and then also to help me like kind of go off on my next turn after I let go of the fish and then I wasn't able to hold anything up and so like the swan song in my I had like swan song in hand when the I think temporal manipulation was on the stack I was just like man I just did not respect this Edric enough I guess because up until then it didn't really seem like anybody was willing to go off through two fishes and but they didn't really need to cast a lot of non-creature spells to do it they basically cast the one and then were able to put together like i think cannon basalt put enough stuff together could pay for the fish at that point for the extra turns and and anything like that that they wanted to do and so that i think i should have left up the swan song i don't know if there was protection because i can't say that i would have got to my next turn and that was my only piece of interaction but there i guess again i got turn ordered but also like i could have respected you know not developing the burgie made a lot of sense in that scenario so i don't know if it was hindsight or if i that was the play and then i just kind of got got so not really sure but that pod went pretty quickly i never for so for like my entire thing i didn't have a single pod that even went close to time there were a lot of draw engines so the entire weekend for everybody i ever spoke to was very ristic and mystic to find if you're just kind of walking around looking at the tables there were a lot of blue farms most popular deck at the event which is Got to be expected. A lot of rock size. The highest density. I, so if you look at my meta breakdown video I did, Blue Farm number one, Kinnon and rock size were both tied for slightly less than that. There were a decent amount of Gila's. But the, the weekend was very defined by people jamming these draw engines that we can continually complain about. And also like people, you know, casting dock sides. Uh, cats out of the bag. Uh, everybody has the cliff note cheat sheet as you know, it's been stated it is unfortunately a mystic rustic and all the kind of cards that fall under that moniker, like kind of format. And if your deck's not doing something like that with those cards, if you don't have the ability, like if you're playing a blue deck, you know, that's going to be a part of your deck. If you're not playing a blue deck, it's really hard. It's it, and this is coming from somebody who's like, you got to think like I've dedicated like since Corbold came out till now, like and I've always felt like that deck has always had the ability to battle. But when I look back like a year, a year and a half ago, even a year, like people weren't mulliging for Ristics and Mystics. It was more so like yeah, if they got them, great, you know, that kind of thing. So you it wasn't like that. They always had the draw engines because Corbel and a lot of times would outscale like a lot of decks because it draws more cards typically you know through the dock side stuff and whatnot but like now that's just it's not the case and there's so many punisher mechanics in this format and it's weird because punisher mechanics typically they didn't feel great in like 60 card but the if your opponent does x you get to do x kind of cards those cards are everywhere like mm -hmm. and it's not even like this is a bow master problem or anything like that and i had a match where i had three bow masters in play like you know the, there was a bow master on my opponent's side and then i had bow master to kill their bow master 
and then like Alex Bowmaster, my Bowmaster, you know, you know, it's like that feels way less egregious than all the other stuff. Again, really interesting just seeing kind of this. We've been discussing this for a while on the channel. It's coming very full circle and it's probably what we should have always been doing like for the mm. longest time you know, is like focusing on these and building around these kind of cards and then obviously having a strong core of a deck and, you know, good commanders and whatever. But that's just what it feels like. Around two had nothing to do with that, really. It was very awkward, like playing against Magda. It's me, a Kennen, and then Tim and Jessica. Magda has a gas start. Uh, I had to mold a four and this will come up later on. But I had to like my opening hand was like land, Ragavan, like mana vaults talisman cabal ritual praetor's grasp and something else can't quite remember so my first thing was like this hand isn't fast enough there's only one blue player at the pod i this is a perfect ad nauseum dockside game this isn't a corpled game i need to really just try to get to these cards and then go from there like try to get a breach online so i just went into this plan that i've all conditioned myself to doing so mulligan found two lands soul ring ad nauseum kept that as my four uh <laughs> drew dual caster brought decay and uh, assassin's trophy as my next three draws but kennan didn't do anything except for have a mystic remora out T and J didn't really do anything and then magda's just like getting ready to like go off like they have they have that new i don't i don't know the name of the card it's a seven one vehicle with like flying and trample and then if it like hits a player you sack it and make seven treasures. But that's pretty cool. Like, you know, a seven one that makes, you know, like that many treasures. Granted, it's a one time use, but still. And Magda was just at the point to where if it comes back to them, they're going to activate it. And because, you know, I haven't really drawn. I, like I have Assassin's Trophy, but I'm really trying to like save it for something specific because I'm also the most limited on resources. Like I'm a turbo ad nauseum deck by nature. My opponents are putting me as the guy with the interaction, which makes no sense sense to me you know that's their thought process and then uh tnj has two mana left up after they gamble so i'm like awesome we're gonna we're in this game because i know i have the assassin's trophy if they go get a removal spell we can collectively control the board and then just play magic you know like you like like get everybody gets a chance to kind of like get back into the game or whatever so i asked the tnj players like, i was like oh what type of removal spell are you going to tutor for with the gamble and they were like oh, i'm not going to get it and i was like what do you mean they're like oh i don't have an answer to an artifact i'm like well it doesn't have to be an artifact it can just be a you kill a creature like you can kill the magda or the seven one you know and go from there and i was like if you go get bowmaster and and you don't discard the bowmaster you you can Boatmaster the Magda now, and then next turn, if they go to crew the vehicle, because Magda will be gone, I can cast an Assassin's Trophy on the Mystic Remora. I'll trigger the Mystic Remora and then shoot down the 7 1 or whatever combination we need. So we have outs to everything. They're like, no, I'm going to get Wheel of Fortune. I'm like, but you can't cast Wheel this turn. And so that's what happened <laughs> and passed to Magda. And then, like, and I thought maybe they were sandbagging, like, a path to exile or swords to plowshare, a bolt, a fatal push, you name it. Soul partition, you name yeah. it. It could have been anything. It could have been a sneeze and it would have killed the seven one and they didn't. So if they hit them, it made seven treasures. At that point, they have 10 total treasures. So I guess I could have killed it in response. But then again, that would have put me in the situation of where I had to use my only thing because they, oh, by the way, they have a torpal orb out. So obviously, like I needed to remove the torpal orb so mm -hmm. I could, you know, dockside and whatnot. So I was in kind of a tough situation there. I guess the Bowmaster wouldn't have been great right there. I No, Bowmaster's still been fine because I could Assassin's Trophy the torpal orb. So Bowmaster could have done his thing. So no, yeah. we, we, that's right. Because I talked it out loud and I was like, we have it all covered. It just ended up like where like Gustav played like a Karn. And so um, and the up six Karn. And I'm just like, ah, we're dead because it doesn't matter. I can't kill anything in response. He'll go get Michael St. Flatus, shut us out, and then turn everything into an artifact. Then go get Clock of Omens and we're, and we're toast. So it didn't matter. And I only had two mana like available colored wise. So the whole time I just I asked the cannon players, is there any do you have anything? You know, there's like no. And then the whole time they had a Besaju in their hand that they could have easily channeled. Mm -hmm. That game, I'll, I'll be honest, that game got to me. Visibly, I was visibly frustrated. And I normally don't get that way in events, but like again, I don't I can't tell people how to play the game or ultimately experience the game and their choice. But if 
I, I think there is a certain responsibility as a player in a tournament, especially like a premium level tournament, no matter what your age lo- or your age level, whatever your experience level is, you can still like ask questions like, you know, talk about it. And I, I'm not trying to fault these players, you know, but at the same time, you know, it's a collaborative game no matter what. Like, you know, we're all trying to win, but also at the same time, we're not trying to lose. Yeah. You know, we're not trying to lose to a player who just literally had a free runway and 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 nobody wanted to work together with me on it because again, I'm the the bad guy cuz I'm playing Jun, you know, mm-hmm. and that's what people think and I just think that people if you rated Corvold and this is for Jun in general. If you rated Corvold based on like really where it's at, it's like maybe C tier, close to like somewhere in the bottom C tier, you know, that type yeah. of thing. And that's and probably I, that's like very objective rating off of potential rather than like like there's not yes. a lot of results so it's like it's, yeah it's hard to rate it on results yeah because it's really funny because before this year corval like only had like one or two results like ever mm. really and like in like legitimately tournaments i yeah i get it like people can top a win a 30 man or something like that or mm. run hot but i'm talking about like 100 plus people events there's very very few and far between those type of events there's like one or two here and there sandwich did it i know sean Angel did it once on Mox Masters top 16 with Mox Masters with it, but that was like last year. And then Vasher. And that's mm-hmm. really all I know for those level size tournaments. And so it's not like there's a ton of information there. Uh, and just if you rated the deck based on the deck itself versus on what you think your head cannon it does, like everyone thinks you just have Doxa and you win the game. That's what everybody thinks. And that's just not how the deck works. Is Dockside a powerful card? Absolutely. But it's not like slam Dockside, win the game. Like you still have to draw the cards. You still have to cast your cards. You still have to fight through interaction. I don't have blue cards. So I'm reliant on like two blasts and two veils and then defense grid and Dosen, which, you know, <laughs> we're not seeing. I'm, we're not, yeah, we're not, could not be found. Dosen. <laughs> yeah. Dosen cannot be found to allow me to like push through these wins. But it is especially funny to be like, I'm really scared of this deck that wins with treasures. We'll just see what Magda does. <laughs> Yeah. Let's yeah. <laughs> Specifically, <laughs> let's let Magna get ten treasures. I'm I'm scared yeah, of what Corvo's gonna do with three or four of yeah. them. Yeah, that's that always cracks me up because it's again, it's the same thing. It's the potential thing, and I don't know. It it just like I, I jokingly said that like Corvold's like really busted with Dockside, but Magda is really actually busted with Dockside. Like yeah. whether you think Magda's good or not, like it's just held back by it colors. Is, I mean yeah. It's virtually almost an A plus B in that, you know, it's a two mana commander that's yeah. pretty good. But yeah, so like that game didn't do well, though. Uh, uh, Gustavo was really cool to play against. Um, Gustavo, I think that's, I apologize if I didn't pronounce that, enunciate that appropriately, but very cool person. And yeah, that was round two. Round two, I just felt felt I was in that unwinnable situation no matter what. And, and no one's going to listen to me, no matter like, because I'm not a person who plays magic uh especially command i don't play commander to like get one over you i'm not trying to i'm not mm. trying to smooth talk you into a play i'm that's just not my game like i'm very much like this is what i have i'll show you my hand if that makes your decision better like you know if i win great if i lose at least let me lose very cleanly and then like let you know the appropriate things kind of like fall into place and that's just how i play i'm very straightforward and honest so i'm not like sandbagging a reanimation spell or something like that like i'm just gonna like there was a match later on where i worldly tutor and then like my opponent asked me like what are you gonna go get and i'm like well i'm gonna try to go get like a a dual caster mage to win the game you know like Mm. that's the goal (laughs) like i'm not trying to you know like oh well if you let me go get this I won't get this. I just don't play that way. And that's yeah. that could be a folly on me. But I also want people to know I'm very a straightforward, open and honest player. So that carries weight moving forward. So if I tell you something, you're not trying to think I'm like slicking you or something like that. Yeah. And it's not like really proactive decks like Corvold get a lot of like inherent political power that, that they get to wield. Like if you're playing in that way, it can be really tough to even get to like when people inherently don't trust you to begin with. Like a lot of times you just don't even get the opportunity to play. Like I play Rock's Eye. Like you can politic just off of like, oh, don't kill Rog because I need fierce for this, blah, blah, blah. Like you can you can yeah. you can make it when you have blue it opens up a lot of doors um, yeah don't kill corvold i need it for my yeah. deflecting swat that one's not gonna fly that's not gonna fly unless it's like <laughs> the other some other person tutors for saw in half or something and you're just like look here's my swat which i do want to point out real quick 
that um, something that this tournament allowed and is probably going to be allowed going forward is the like impartial or whatever sharing of information to certain players. So previously, the rules have been that you can if you want to make information known, that's your information, you can do that. But it needs to be all players at the table. You can't just show one player like a card in your hand or something. But for the purposes of multiplayer competitive magic, at least at Eminence events, and we saw this at like Mox Masters Invitational, you can show like you can say like, oh, here's this. And you can show a player something as long as it's your information. So like part cards in your hand, whatever you can show to one person. You don't have to show the whole table, yeah, which I think is a good evolution of CDH. At a yeah, I like, agree. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we're, we're just starting to see like a refinement of like the procedural aspect of the tournament play versus like necessarily gameplay itself because players play the game. They're the ones who are going to develop the meta and stuff like that. Just like in sports, like, you know, players win the game, coaches coach. Yeah. And that's kind of how it is here. And then they're doing a great job just refining, cleaning things up, seeing how far they can push the boundaries and keep it like clean and efficient time-wise as well. So, cause uh, you know, I've heard a lot of rumblings where people like complain that stacks decks get poorly punished because of the timing and whatnot. And I'm just like, at any time in any game of Magic, it's 60 minutes. So what makes you think, you know, is that correct? Is it still 60 for tournament play, like 60 card formats? Or is it 50? I, I haven't played in, a, in, in an event in a while. So it's been a, like those and kind of events in a bit. So just correct me in the comments. Tell mm -hmm. me I'm an idiot. That's totally fine. But my point is, is like, you don't get unlimited time to do that. That's not healthy. That's not healthy for you know, the game that's not healthy for even in like, if you want to do that in your casual games and sit there for two hours and chit chat and whatever, that's fine. But that's like not a tournament player experience. And it wouldn't so be viable. It, at it's not viable. Like also, let's be real here. It was pretty standard for a, to have 90 minute rounds not long ago. 90 minute rounds yeah. were standard. Stacks decks weren't winning still. Even when they had an extra 20, 30 minutes, they still, you had, you would see. Matt's making enemies right now. Well, it's just reality. Like, one, it's Winota just... wasn't really a stacks deck when it was doing well. Two, no, Winota, Winota does not do well into a environment where players are, you know, smart and they know what the deck does and they're going to respect it if you don't believe me disprove it play, play the deck now and see if you do well there are still some players who could probably do okay with it but seeing consistent performance at the level that that deck had in most hands not just like the best hands that kind of thing is unlikely to happen at the level cdh is at and cdh is only developing faster and faster and getting like more nuanced and like players are very aware of what's going on. But yes, stacks like still weren't winning tournaments that often. There were, you'd spike a top 16, you know, you'd have like a Heliod uh, get up there and things like that. Also, we are not an ad nauseum meta. That was one of the strengths of like stacks. The rule of lost stacks decks very much beat up the ad nauseum decks. Like we were talking about earlier, a lot of the like plays that would have been tutor for Nas are now tutor for Mystic, tutor for Mystic. There isn't really a focus on getting win attempts very early. There are for some decks still, like still some of the ROG decks are trying to do that. But even those overwhelmingly are doing early Ristics and Mystics because one, those are easier to get out. And two, those are about as good if they resolve. Not quite in, in the terms of like immediate win, but in terms of where does my win rate go if this resolves? Probably pretty similar. I will say uh, Ad Nauseam feels like five mana instant speed thoughtsies. <laughs> yeah. You know, still a powerful card, obviously, yeah. still played in like a ton of decks but and you know it's just like it's another piece of the puzzle versus like it's the thing you know it's the plan mm -hmm. and that's something that's pretty evident and that's and, and two like if you want to play stacks look if you want to play abzan stacks cool that's great I think the deck's sweet. I I like a lot of the cards in the in in the deck as a whole, you know. But if you're going to go, I, I'm going to play this type of deck. Just play Witherbloom command or Witherbloom combo in your deck. You get Grand Abolish and Ranger Captain protect you. Like have a way to just end the game. Like you know, that's the that's the one thing that I've noticed. And I I mean I don't know how many stacks decks that are consistently played like in the tournament scene that are just like win conless. I don't know if that even exists. I don't know. I, I mean like heliod has win cons now easier win cons too thanks to like agatha soul cauldron and those type of mm -hmm. things even like a uh, sisse jaggy deck that's a stacks deck it once the engine starts you know it just chains into things just having the ability to close the game out in any fashion or form you know and this is sans your opponents interacting with you like mm -hmm. you, your deck still needs to be able to go from point a to point b if need be that's where that to me is important in terms of your deck choice i know we just went off the rails based on our rounds and stuff <laughs> but you you know it's all relative we're talking about magic so uh, this is more of a casual laid-back podcast that you can listen to on the on your way home 
Yeah, so we're going to kind of move a little bit quicker and just talk about some some highlighted notes you want to get on to. I'm going to bring up my round two because I believe it was the only triple rock side pod in the entire event. That, that's one way to play. <laughs> it was I was going second behind um, Deverick, who you might know as a high performing CDH tournament player has played a lot of Ninjila was on Rog at this event. He was going first. I didn't feel good going <laughs> going going into that. And then Rog behind me and then Blue Farm first and second Rog players. We both went turn one tutor turn two. Ristic was very glad that my resolved. Mine was a lot less pretty because I know he had went um, turn one, I think it was Imp Seal, and then turn two Ristic. I had to go turn one Mana Vault, turn two Gamble for Ristic, cast the Ristic, discarding a deflecting spot that totally would have saved the game, and I think I would have won had I not discarded that. But that over Ristic was better. Uh, I would have liked to see one of the other three cards or something in my hand. That was the other scary part was he kept first seven. And I was like, this is a guy who knows what he's doing. And I had to go to five. And I was like, man, my odds of winning just went so far down just to the mulligans. Like, I know that he kept a banger hand. And then, yeah, he would like one thing that was definitely uh, a trend for me was just like, I did not see a lot of ways to win the game. Like, it wasn't that I was making win attempts. They were getting thwarted. I just didn't get to make win attempts for various reasons. Not seeing the cards, cards not lining up well, um, games getting out from under me. That he had like a necro and to born upon a win and then yeah it that was, was good that was very good there there was definitely a window because he didn't win that was important there he did not win there he he did all that stuff cast a whole bunch of things wasn't able to win there and then i think what the table and i should have done is realized that like hey he doesn't have it because he had a, a billion mana could have won clearly mm -hmm. and we had no interaction we should have just all recognized hey let's just not feed into the ristic that they're ending with and then we should be able to do it because he went down to one life We'll, we'll be able to get there at some point. We didn't do that. My kind of talk with the table and my attempt of what I wanted to do uh, didn't work that well. And I, I think I should have had that awareness. Like, I guess the rest of the table also didn't have the awareness, but I should have, you know, I can only control myself. So I should have been like, hey, look, I'm going to develop paying for Ristic. You know, I tried to get rid of the first thing I did was try to get rid of it. That didn't work. And I was like, I should I think from there just said, OK, I can't get rid of it. Let's just play responsibly. We know they don't have the win. They don't get a draw step because they're on Necro. I, I think there is, is where I messed up in that pod. Still a competent rock side player keeping first seven going first. Your odds to win there are not especially high. But yeah, I, I think that's one way I could have played that uh, differently. So yeah, that was a fun pod. And then I think I got the unique honor if you want to call it that at this event to get to play in single double triple and quadruple rog silas pods because um i think it was after round four um which i did get a win off the back of a going forth um turn one the one ring which just carried me uh, i got to play into the quadruple rog side pod that they put on stream just to have something going while there was like a lull while that you know they were doing stuff uh and that was a lot of fun we didn't get to finish it but i got to do turn two uh we, well one we spent like 10 15 minutes mulliganing <laughs> because we all went to like four or five and then i got to do um turn two ristic plus mystic and draw a, a billion cards and then i had to go shuffle off to my round five after that but that was a lot of fun that was really cool and um yeah i, I got to see as as much of rog sai as you could ever want to see during this event there is no such thing as too much rog sai i will say kind of outside of the event i kind of wish i had brought a different deck at least to play when i wasn't playing in the event partially also i mean we've kind of talked about it but i think this event kind of reinforced that there's a pretty solved meta of what you should be doing in a, in a game and at least right now for me i don't think it's all that fun turboing out ristics and mystics and getting to play like if i had brought like the hada to play inside games i would have enjoyed that a lot more than just like all right let's keep playing rog sai Let's keep mowing to four for Ristic Mystic or, you know, especially now Necro, um, which at least that has like a lot of play to it. And it's very like, what am I doing? Kind of focus. The metagame of CD will cover this more and more. I think it's going to be interesting to see. And this was, again, like kind of the consensus I had with a lot of different players I talked with that, like, it may not be that feasible to have a very competitive environment where some of these outlier cards continue to be the main things that we're playing with. Uh, and yeah. it'll be interesting to see, one, how the popularity of CDH shapes the decisions of, like, bands and, and things like that going forward, um, especially with, like, Darcy having been shaking up recently, losing member in Sheldon, you know, rest in peace Sheldon. And we'll see how things change and develop. And then, like, again, like, magic just changes a lot nowadays anyways. So it'd be interesting to see how things develop going forward. And I do think, you know, some of the, you know, I complained, like, eight months ago, like, hey, this format might actually struggle for this. And I think as uh it's sort of the you know i guess the cream rises to the top and people figure out what what's good and what they're going to do every game it might be more and more apparent that there may be some like problematic play patterns 
yeah, I could definitely see something like that because it's part of the game. You know, it's, mm. you know, you gotta, you gotta play with what cards you have. You know, you can't sit there and like choose and choose the pods that you're in and always get sweet setups and pray that your opponents never have it. Cause you want your opponents to be competent, good, you know, good players. So you have good quality game and whatnot, but you know, to just round things out round three lost to wart the red black goblin player was pretty cool though uh they snooped us to death because the endurance player uh the cannon player endurance me you know on their turn and uh then we previously just lost to the snoot player so so again in my experience the endurance player has not won yet so and i made a joke when the endurance at the battlefield i was like oh well we don't Cannon's not going to win because it's the endurance <laughs> player. But anyways, that was fun. Uh, round four, I was feeling pretty defeated. It was like the same thing at cookout. And I thought this deck was way better than what I brought to the cookout. You know, I'm I'm playing against Rogsai, Blue Farm, and Timna Malcolm. I don't know if if you're, if you're following along. I talked about how I mulliganed a hand away that had like turn one Ragavan and some like rocks and not like a lot of payoffs. This hand was virtually the same thing, except for it did have a Wishclaw Talisman. So it's like, I'm going to keep this hand. I know this isn't the type of hand I really want in this pod but i'm gonna keep it and ragavan carried me that game like ragavan like i was fortunate drew a land off the top and i'm just like playing like my resources out and everything played a necropotence on turn three by the way first time ever seeing a necropotence in a tournament which was wild just necroed for like five or so life so i could just basically sculpt my hand and then come down to it next turn just drop some mana rocks defense grid first time saw defense grid and four tournaments and at that point like i was able to uh wish call talisman for Doxai. Doxai, I, mean, I think like seven or eight tokens. All she wrote from there, you know, got there. So Corbel did Corbel things and it was great. You know, it's typically like don't keep a hand with, without a payoff. And yes, typically you don't. But sometimes when you just have that amount of resource in your hand, you know, especially with the five mana commander, like I'm more open and Corbel to keep hands like that moving forward. I used to keep hands like that, had a higher win rate, started focusing on different style of hands and win rate dropped. You know, I don't say one's right, one's wrong. It's all contextualized. There's, you know, nuance and all that all fun stuff. And then five played against Alex. Really cool. Finally got to meet just in person. Uh, that's accepted for those who don't know. Um, really sweet, ultra respectful, just really great person to play with. Highly enjoyed it. Uh, I totally derped in that match. There was a Wheel of Fortune with a Bowmaster on the stack and I had a Mayhem Devil, a Corvold, and a Dockside out. And there's a Delphi Voidwalker, and then there's an Agatha Soul Cauldron. Sisse had, like, a, the blindingly fast start. Like, it was crazy. It was, like, Mana Crypt, Soul Ring, Fell of Warzone, uh, Arcane Signet, Agatha Soul Cauldron. Like, like, turn one. It was just nuts. I don't know why my whole because they're because they basically if they untap they 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 win right with their board state. So my whole thing was thinking, oh, I need to help. I need to help Bowmaster kill their battlefield, and I just should have sacked my Lotus Petal and shot the Bowmaster and prevented it from wiping my board and exiling everything because of Dalphy. And then I will say this. Be prepared for events. I don't care if you think you're hydrated, you're not hydrated. If you think you got enough sleep, you didn't get enough sleep. And I got like good sleep and I thought I was really hydrated. I had electrolytes. If you got a migraine, don't be stubborn. Go get an ibuprofen if you can take that. Go get Tylenol. This is not medical advice. This is just, <laughs> just be smart about it. And I don't know why, but I was just like such a dummy <laughs> that weekend and just was like, it was funny. It was like, I was in really good spirits because the people I met were awesome. And it like, I don't know, it like subdued me a little bit. And um, uh, that migraine just kind of made me null. And I just, I don't know why it's like I zoned out when that happened. I was like, you know, so take your time, pause the game, talk things out, point things out, recheck stuff in a timely fashion so you don't miss anything. And that's the moral of the story for the tournament for me. I, I had said my goals kind of going into the event were just like, meet people you know hang out get games in and i definitely succeeded in that regard people were great everyone i talked to was awesome all my games were great briefly going over my round four win because that was nice to get in one at least going forth i think i did gemstone caverns and then i went i think it was land right of flame grim monolith the one ring just hoping it would no protection for it just hoping it would happen my pod was like niv tnt and Tim Necrom, they said they weren't blue farm. They weren't on Nas. I keep going against Tim Necrom players who say this isn't blue farm and I never know what it means. But <laughs> I think I think they're memeing you because yeah. that because blue farm is just a meme name now. So yeah, they're just trying to they're trying to say I know they, blue farm. they were at least being I think they were being serious when they said this deck isn't on Nas. Yeah. And I was just like, all right, I hope this ring sticks. I was a little worried Niv might have interaction for it because their deck is all interaction. But one ring stuck. One thing that was very weird that went into my winning, like the turn where I actually got to win was the TNT player was right in front of me in turn order. 
and they just went raw ad nauseum with no extra mana up and, and it worked horribly for them they didn't hit a single piece of mana um very fortunate for me they just sculpted no free interaction they could use because they went down to like one life they had to just discard the misstep discard the force of will and i was just like oh okay well i can jam it nas resolved and i i almost felt so dumb too because i could tell the niv had something and so i was just like i had force negation and i was just like yeah i gotta pass on the nas i was like i can maybe i can help you i i kind of was like trying to fake a mind break trap and i was like i might be able to help you fight over it but i can't do it and then he was just like pass on nas and i was like oh man <laughs> i got, yeah. got here <laughs> what? i was like oh man i got so greedy i think it was for it, maybe it was force of will it was something to interact but i wanted to keep it for my turn so it might pro, maybe it wasn't force negation because i want to save it for my turn but i was like yeah i can't i got nothing i immediately got punished <laughs> for that and then there nas was just like a full brick was able to like go to my turn i used my three three uh ape that i had and then and smacked into at the TNT player because they had to block with Esper so to go down a draw. Dockside for six, I think. Nas with Hank packed and something else behind it. The other thing that I had that resolved. I got two Dockside so much that turn. Like that was the only Dockside I saw. And I got two Dockside. I drew through with my ring. Um, went to my turn. Went pretty low after the Nas. I, it was just like Nas in the final fortune. Go to my next turn. Upkeep. They. I was at pretty low life. I won my crit flip. They bounce. Went to bounce my ring in response to the trigger so that I would take four damage instead of the three. And so like I just tapped the ring in response. They had chained the one ring. So I was just like, okay, tap, draw four, take four, went down to four life, copy the chain, bounce my dock side, recast my dock side, snapped my dock side, recast my dock side, easy game, easy life from there. Uh, did like a beseech the mirror line, paying for Ristic until I could get to uh defense grid. Got the breach, escaped beseech again. Was able to do whatever I wanted behind the defense grid at that point. And uh, yeah, just did a big old manual storm, bunch of mana thing. But that was like the only game i saw those type of cards which is what was like frustrating in the rest of the games tended to mulligan pretty aggressively you can't really keep a hand that doesn't have a payoff so i didn't and um but they just didn't really line up in a lot of the other games that was day one i played a fifth round i didn't win in it and then had i won in the fifth i think we both were like that if we had won in the fifth round we would have come back day two and then just you know tried to get the other like win in a draw or two wins to get in you needed yeah. it was 17 points ended up being the cutoff to make 16 and one person at 17 didn't even make it so there were 10 people at 17 points and it was like a very slight draw between like the last two like there's just like two percent difference or whatever in their breakers interestingly for this event day one there was a redemption that started strangely early in the day it was like you had to decide after round two if you wanted to quit or not it was something like that round two or three that was strange i get why they wanted to do it early in the day in terms of being able to hold the event at a reasonable time but like it would be very strange to drop that early i felt i felt it was very odd to drop on saturday that early he's like you just don't know what's gonna happen you got five more games or something you know five four or five more games that that was odd to me but then also there was a redemption again on sunday and so if you didn't know what you were doing saturday you wanted to do it on sunday you could do it then and that was a much larger event i think i think way more people ended up doing that and then yeah get day two is kind of what you'd expect two rounds of the morning um those went smoothly best to my or to my knowledge and then they cut to top 16 we're not going to cover the top 16 here like i said earlier because i have a video breaking down those deck lists what won what got top four there's some really cool ones there there is a lot of the stuff you might expect that made it but i go over a lot of the notable cards because we're seeing some new kind of stapley things show up we're seeing a lot of reanimates pop up in blue farm we're seeing a lot of boromirs and a lot less lavinias like there's a lot of swaps that are happening and then there were some um decks that you might have not even expected to go there so i would definitely go check that out if you're curious about like what the meta looked like at this event especially at the top level but yeah overall very high praise for the event it was great even if i wasn't a sponsor i liked the last one i wasn't a sponsor and being sponsored didn't really affect my enjoyment of this one i really enjoyed it in terms of things i would like to see going forward can you can you think of anything any kind of criticism you'd have or something that you'd like to see shaken up i will say because I was at the event, I didn't get to, I haven't got to catch the commentary yet, casting and just the general broadcast. I know it was on YouTube over Twitch. I'm curious as to why that was the case, but I'm assuming everything else broadcasting has just improved and improved and improved. Um, I know Lauren and Zane did the casting day one, and I think it was Drake and Lauren day two. If I remember correctly, Zane, Drake and Zane. I know Zane did. I know Zane did some coverage with uh with Mr. Sasser. So okay. that whole casting crew sounds like it was probably like a plus double thumbs up. If I go and watch it and it's miserable, I'll drag them on Twitter. I'll just tag them on. Just look for me to tag them both on Twitter and just say like, nah, bro, you didn't have it. 
It wasn't it. But I'm assuming it was very high quality. <laughs> You're not him. So <laughs> um, They did do, I don't know how long they've been doing this, but I didn't notice it until I was playing on the featured match thing, is that they have a little active player slip that they move around uh, now on the table. You make it easier for the stream. That probably has made it so much easier to tell what's happening. Uh, nice little changes like that that seem obvious, but really aren't until like somebody thinks of it like to see that again i'm gonna go and watch those if i have any whatever kind of feedback i'll put it in either some video or i'll put it on twitter but overall i have nothing but praise for the event yeah just to echo your sentiments like my thoughts were the event was ran very smoothly it is still it's it's a weird thing for me when people come up and you know you're like oh hey eric and i feel awkward because i don't know their names mm. and by and large <laughs> i'm like a pretty private person mm -hmm. like i'm very much like i'm not like super active in discords like I only try to speak about something if I have some, you know, anything of value to add. I don't, I can't spend all my time in the discords as too much or like even like on Twitter or X or whatever, you know, I like to just very clean, short, sweet post, you know, I'm, I'm very much like, you know, you see what you get. I'm very like front and, you know, polite and I try to try to be those things, right? You know, mm -hmm. like that's just kind of how I was raised. It was extremely humbling. There's two parts. It was extremely humbling meeting people who were just super supportive of the show they were big fans of the fact that i'm a corbold stand but ultimately just i got a lot of compliments on my deck and because my deck is all but one foiled japanese out for everything that can be foiled japanese things that can't be japanese are obviously whatever edition that they are like saw in half the dual lands those type of things but except for final fortune i do not have foiled japanese uh seventh edition i do have a foil one but uh, i got a lot of compliments on that and like people were just like late you know as as we did you know didn't do very well still had a win but in those pods people were still like you know more casual you know in between like somebody else's turn they weren't like slowing the game they're like oh can i see that card that looks sweet you know a really humbling experience meeting fans like fans of the show it was kind of like weird at the cookout this one was like a way more higher influx of people mm -hmm. and uh, i even had a fan approach me and was like trying to give me a sweet japanese card and I, i'm such a dummy because like i didn't accept it because i was i'm the kind of person if i don't need a card I, I I'm not going to take something from somebody else. I really wish I did accept it because it was like a Japanese dismember foil and got them to sign it and put it in my keepsake binder to save that. So, you know, I, it was just like I was just kind of like trying to be polite. In reality, I, I wish I would accept it. But just the thought of somebody doing that, because there's way more popular like YouTubers than us and stuff like that, that, you know, are also like really high level tournament players and mad respect to them. And, and then also just from a logistics standpoint of from our perspective like again like zane great energy just high energy always come up and say hi or how you doing those type of things just you know and he's a he's very busy same with like i got to meet mikey hollahan for the first time and just accepted and just all these other people that i've either interacted with or know in the same social circles and again like i don't think that this is possible without eminence eminence basically has like now bridged the gap of all these players and yeah I, I think that's fantastic. The fact that like I can meet people and have a conversation with people that we already have like some level of foundation between us and we've never met before. That's pretty awesome. And this is like tournament stuff aside. This is just the experience of it. CCS was was great. Like really enjoyed that venue was really awesome. I'm excited to hopefully go back again yep. soonish. CCS, please consider just consider just 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 consider full proxy event. Think about how successful this event was and consider doing your own full proxy events. That's all I'm gonna say. I get they usually do reserve list only proxies. I would just say maybe, maybe think about you know how successful that event was and consider that people will show up to your event whether or not they bring real magic cards or not. I also wanna say real quick, again, like Eric mentioned, I got a bunch so my deck, which is much dumber than Eric's, is fully future sight, rock sai. I got a lot of compliments about that. I don't think anyone in the world <laughs> has a list like that. So that was cool. And yeah, also the people, I would get like so many people who are just like, where do I know you from? Or, you know, in between, the, like they're from rounds is like, oh, were you at Mox Smashers? Like, nope, Lamora's card, Learning CDH. It's me. And they're like, oh my God, how'd I forget? And then yeah, just people being like, Lamora, Lamora and Eric, Learning CDH. Um, <laughs> that was really cool. Everybody I got to talk to was, was super awesome. Not a negative experience to be had at the event. Uh, everybody I played with, everyone I just talked to, got games in with at nights at the hotel. Everybody was super cool. And again, super smooth event. Big shout outs to Eminence and all the, the big events they do. They're having, you know, more and more frequently. Really fortunate when it gets to be in an area, you know, it's more local to us, you know, like 
like we were able to just drive to this event. Really nice. Big A plus for the event. I got I got nothing else really to to say. We could we could we could go on and on about little things that happen, but really just like Again, I want to reiterate, like I said before, if you get the opportunity to get to an event like this, big or small, if you can get to a in-person CDH paper event, I would really recommend you go. And then especially if one of these get anywhere near you or you can travel to one and it makes sense, absolutely think about coming. Very much worth it. It is a really unique experience to get to turn that thing that is often like a little, like a niche that you have that you just like consume content for. And then maybe you talk to people online about into like a real tangible, hey, here's an entire room of people who are passionate about the same thing I am, that conversion of the thing that you love becoming more real, I think is really hard to put a value on. And it's just really amazing and exciting and exhilarating to get to see. Only thing that I will do different for next time is uh, I, I might want to show up like if it's a Saturday, Sunday event, uh, instead of showing up on Friday, maybe like show up on like a Thursday night and try to meet up with people who are already there. Uh, yeah. I would like to do a little bit more of the social side of things, free I, I tournament and, and probably post tournament. Because again, I'm old. I like to yeah. go to bed at like, 8 30 9 o'clock and get like you know a good seven eight hours sleep i kind of expect very- to not play in the next event i think that i get to attend and i'd again like maybe saying like thursday through monday or thursday through monday or something and yeah. just be able to just fully show up hang out with you know whoever would deal with me and just like get to experience being there and just like talk with people and uh you know help it be smooth if i need to or just like get to you know get to show up and hey th- throw, throw us on we'll commentate we'll, we'll show up thursday let us commentate day one. I know we, we can't do top 16. You'll want somebody who knows what they're doing for top 16. Just let us do like round one and two, you know, maybe round three. And, uh, you know, I, I, th- I think we could ca- we could carry it at least for that long. <laughs> yeah. Well, wrap this up. There's a uh, if anybody knows anything about Spider-Man, there's like Spider-Man No More, which is like a famous comic where Spider-Man's like walking in this alley and his suits in the trash. I made a meme of that last night and I was like me and then Corville and I put Corville to where the Spider-Man suit is in the trash. <laughs> Spoiler alert, rebuilt Corville like completely on the way down because I had these thoughts like over like the whole time I've been playing it. It's like, do these cards like dual caster mage sucks? Like, <laughs> yeah, just get, like these cards are bad. Like uh, it's just, like Zane even Zane and I like briefly discussed about like that's kind of like the Mardu problem is like you've got like 90 good cards and then the last 10 cards or whatever. You're yeah. like, you know, what am I doing here? And and not like a that, single that, good that, clean win con among them a lot of the times. And and just not efficient. And then, you know, and you would think like what the way like twin flame and dual caster and all that stuff would work with Dockside. It just I'm telling you do it like anytime I see dual caster in my hand, I just I, it enrages me. So <laughs> uh, and it doesn't pitch to force the will. So that's important. Rebuilt the deck on the way back up here, put it on Moxville, sleeved it up, <laughs> played it last night in two pods, went 2 0 with it. Uh, spoiler alert, I do not have win conditions in my deck. So <laughs> it's completely everything I've Don't been pushing them. the past like year and a half is like having an A plus B. My A plus B is like breach, <laughs> is breach. That's and <laughs> that's my A breach plus and B. Crater's so. grasp. Yeah, those type of things. But no, it was, it was actually really smooth. But uh, I will be playing Rockside Blue Farm, Thras Vile. I might mess with Blue's Clues because we've talked about that deck on stream before. But I would say that I'm about to start my Blue Farm arc legitimately because uh, I want to be able to have agency over the game. I'm definitely thinking about trying a couple different decks. I want to try Kark Silas. Uh, I want to try probably Blue's Clues, some Thras Vile, something in that color combination or something like it. Sisay another one i'm interested in that isn't quite as um like super proactively like jamming win attempts slanted but also kind of is uh it has that sort of like almost fake politics aspect of it just like well i'm just the the mid-range deck but also like rarely cast spells i'm basically just throwing out things that overwhelm and win the game with with a lot of toolbox utility and like that so i'm definitely looking for decks to try not that i don't like rock size some of the play patterns of it are just like kind of dull to me at the moment and i'm just really want to just jam a lot of stuff because again like we talked about before i think there's a lot of room for innovation right now and there are so many more cdh playables than there's been previous years and like a lot of new ones out that i definitely think there's a lot of room to try like a lot of new cool things if you enjoyed this video let us know down below what you liked what you didn't like what do you want us to cover next time as always thank you to all my amazing patrons over on lamoris cards and Thank you for 5,000 subscribers. Just hit that during Top Deck Expo. I didn't even get to see it happen because there's just so much other nonsense going on that I couldn't keep up with it. Really big stuff for the channel. Thank you so much. Thank you for checking this out. Thank you for playing CDH and watching CDH and caring about CDH. And why don't you go play it? Go play some CDH. Have a good one, everybody.